was some uh, state of bidding that was due on December 23rd. Where are we right now with the sale, both on like the which direction it's heading and kind of in the process? Yeah, late at the end of December, there was there was some form of early bids or interest due. From what I understand, that was not a final thing. And I, I do believe there, there's a number of people who are looking at the commanders and are still either waiting in the wings or, or, or still trying to suss what Dan's intentions are. I, the, the most interesting thing about the commander sale to me is that there is an obvious really deep pocketed buyer out there and Jeff Bezos who has expressed interest in, in wanting to own an NFL team. He would be unless Elon Musk also wants the team, the richest person in, in, in the auction. And that scares a lot of other parties when they're interested in buying the team. And I'll, I'll give you a, a good example of it. When Steve Cohen was, was, was interested in buying the Mets and, and he did a dance with the Will Ponds. There was a deal. It fell apart. He was out. A lot of the other groups who were interested in the buying the Mets were like, look, I, I don't have Steve Cohen's money and I don't care about the Mets the way Steve Cohen does. So if Steve Cohen wants to buy the Mets, I'm not going to waste my time. And right. buy side bankers, for example, who only get paid if a transaction happens, they're all like, look, if, if Steve Cohen wants to buy the Mets, he's going to buy the Mets. And I'm not also going to waste my own time trying to get my guy into the room just to find out that Steve Cohen's going to outbid him by $500 million and, and everyone walks their own way. Um, and, and that's happening to a degree. When the Broncos were sold, Rob Walton's name, it took a while for his name to come out. And I think one of the reasons there is that everyone around the sale process understood that as soon as a Walton was involved here, a lot of the other bid groups were going to be like, oh, I'm not going to get into a bidding war with the 11th richest man in the world. Um, I'm going to lose that. So there was a value for people on the sell side in, in Denver to, to get Rob Walton's name out of the press as much as possible, but, but because it made it more people were interested knowing that w before they knew he was there. And I think that's, what's going on a bit with the commanders It's like, if Jeff Bezos wants to pay seven and a half billion dollars for the commanders, Jeff Bezos is going to be the next owner of the commanders. Unless Dan has some, really vitriolic feelings towards Jeff. I don't believe that he does. But outside of that, Jeff Bezos is, is just so rich that it, it's not worth anybody else's time really to bid against him. So I think in, in a lot of ways, that, and I get this question a lot, and I don't, I don't know the answer to be clear, but a lot of people are asking, is Jeff interested? And if Jeff is interested, this could be a very easy, tidy process because not only is he likely to be the biggest bidder, but a lot of people are just not going to want to go through the process to bid against him. Um, so I think that's one of the interesting dynamics we're seeing uh, with the commanders. The other big one, and I also don't know the answer to this, is exactly what Dan's intentions are, right? I, I had heard... Uh, maybe a year ago, a little bit less that he had been talking to people at the NFL about trying to sell minority stakes. I agree with you a hundred percent. I, that is a tough sell given the yeah. way that, 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 that Dan's reputation and also the way his relationship with the last group of limited partners fell apart, uh, both publicly and, and legally. Um, I, I don't think there's a whole list of people, uh, interested in, in being a minority partner under Dan Snyder. I do think that changes a little bit. As you said, if I, if I'm an LP for five years, but you're telling me that in five years I have a right to buy the whole thing, that I think is something that is interesting to some people who would be willing to maybe stomach the whatever the drawbacks is of being a minority partner under Dan for a little bit, knowing that at some point soon in writing they have an opportunity to become the top dog. Um, but I do think there's still a little bit of confusion, and the truth may be that Dan doesn't really know either. There's another report coming out about uh, workplace culture around the commanders, and that could have new information that could be renewed pressure from other NFL owners who have been, I would say, fairly lukewarm so far and wanting to push him out the door. Uh, so I think there's some uncertainty about what the, the what other owners are going to do. There's uncertainty around maybe what Dan wants to do. And then there's uncertainty around it, whether or not Jeff Bezos is interested. And all those things kind of combine right now to be a very interesting and bizarre sale process, one that is a, a lot less cut and dry than maybe ones we've seen in, in other sports in the past few years. Right. Most people sell because they just they don't want to get out. They see that how much money these teams are going for, and they are like, I would like that money instead of to own the team, whatever. How much... Like what, what is kind of the latest as far as you've been able to tell on Dan's ability to stay in the league? Like, obviously we're all waiting for the Mary Jo White investigation and it almost seems not at almost, I mean, Goodell almost said it. He's like, well, we'll revisit it at the time if Dan's no longer the owner of the team. And it's like, 
Oh, so if he sells, you guys get to keep all your secrets. Cool, 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 cool. That's really the accountability that we're we're hoping for, the transparency that we're hoping for. So if that, you know, we, we'll see what that Mary Jo White investigation uh, shows if we ever get to see it. But is there, like, Dan might need to be out of the league. How does that change the sale, the timeline, the everything? If whether Roger Goodell is like, Dan, I've seen the report. You need to sell now. Or Dan calls everybody's bluff and the report comes out and it's as bad as we all think it's going to be. Yeah, it, it, I think it's my, my sense from talking to people in and around NFL ownership is that owners want Dan out. Uh, and if they could all press a button and know there were no consequences for any of them and that he would go quietly, almost all of them would hit the button immediately. The truth is that they don't live in that world, right? And And I know there are people in and around the NFL who are fearful of setting some sort of a precedent around Dan that could then come for them at some point if former employees or more information comes out about their own organizations. I, I, there was that ESPN story about Dan collecting information about incriminating right. information around other owners. I, I don't know if anyone feels any pressure around that or even how much of that is true, but, but it's, it is clear that NFL owners would like him out, but they are very wary of, both the precedent that it sets and also what, what may happen on the way out. And I think I'm sure Roger Goodell feels this way. I think a lot of owners do. They, they just kind of want Dan to come to this conclusion on his own. It, it makes things significantly easier to not have to go kind of the, the Donald Sterling route, just to use an example. Um, and, and maybe again, maybe Dan has already reached that conclusion. Maybe hiring bank of America was the start of that. Uh, or maybe it was just an attempt to, to see if he could raise some money from minority partners and, and put some cash in his pocket for a, a stadium uh, development or to pay off some debt or whatever it is. Who knows? But I, I think the NFL is, they obviously could do more. They've, they've been unwilling so far to do it. The Mary Jo White report, in my opinion, is the last chance, really. the the I, I feel, and you may feel the same way, every time we get more information about the commanders and, and, and what's going on, in that organization by, by high ranking members over the past two decades, I, I just feel like this deja vu. I'm like, I can't even remember if it's new information or have I read right. this before? I, I just know, I, I know things were really bad and I hear new anecdotes and I, I, I literally can't remember if I've read this thing before or if this is a new thing and I should have new outrage over it. Um, but there has been, uh, a, a plethora of information, certainly enough. Uh, enough information out there about the commanders in the past two decades for NFL owners, if they really wanted to, to push for him to sell. And they have not, at least publicly, really, they have not done that, or really even privately, from my understanding, they haven't done that. So in, in my mind, I think that ship has really sailed for the NFL, but there there may be one last chance to do that. But I do think the general feeling is everybody is kind of hoping that Dan comes to this conclusion on his own, that it's untenable. Right. He can get a huge payday, a really, really big payout if he sells the commanders right now. And that maybe that's enough for him to kind of wash his hands and walk away. So I agree with you on that front. Um, the Mary Jo White investigation has two things going for it. One, it's pro it's been promised by Goodell that there will be a written report, right? The the Wilkinson yeah. report was, but then again, there was a promise. They no one likes to you know at the NFL. It's like we didn't promise. It's like yeah, you did. There was supposed to be a written report, and you guys just didn't freaking do it because you're the worst. Um, but Mary Jo White report is supposed to have a written report, which will have obviously a lot more detail than the Wilkinson report, which I would remind people all the time was like they didn't lay out the crimes but the punishment was as much punishment as basically they were allowed to do by their bylaws like it did not feel like enough because what was done was so bad but they couldn't find him more than 10 million dollars they mm -hmm. couldn't do i mean i guess they could have suspended him more concretely but like they they actually were telling us that really bad stuff happened they just refused to tell us the really bad stuff which was uh really unfortunate <laughs> you know just bs job by them Mary Jo White report, not going to have that. The other big thing in the Mary Jo White report is that could incriminate Dan personally. Um, included in the Mary Jo White uh, report is investigations of Tiffany Johnson's allegations, uh, which were made at the Congressional Roundtable, and the 2009 alleged sexual assault on his plane. And if he is personally incriminated, as opposed to you know, everyone underneath him incriminated, and thus, like, hey, man, could you not hire the worst people on, on the planet and let them... <laughs> 
create this culture that happened and all these bad things. I think that could be the kind of thing where owners are more likely to push him out because they are less scared about, well, certainly some are scared of things that could come out in their own personal past. It's a lot higher bar than, and frankly, a pretty acceptable bar compared to like, oh, former employee said this and now I'm getting blamed for it. Yeah, I think that's all. I think that's all right. So, so it, it could very well be that in whatever it is, a couple months, a couple, a couple weeks, whenever that report comes out, that there is a, a, enough in there, new or enough in there, as you said, kind of directly tied to to Dan specifically, that this becomes either an, an easy decision for owners or one that the public kind of forces on them. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is where that stands as of right now. Um, terms of timeline we've heard potentially you know with with whatever round of bidding happened in december um the earliest this could happen is the owners meetings in march what are the chances you're about to either make me really excited or just completely burst my bubble <laughs> what what are the chances this is done by the end of march at these owners meetings I, I th at this point i think it's fairly unlikely uh, again, okay. going back to the Bezos thing, the bubble. If, Be if Bezos wants to pay seven and a half billion and, and, and Dan right. wants to sell the team, that, that could happen extremely quickly. Um, it, that, that is not a Jeff is not difficult to approve for NFL owners. It's not difficult for Jeff to have the cash ready to make that transaction. That is a very tidy process. Um, but if it if, if for whatever reason that doesn't materialize, I think it's going to be very hard to, to get a deal done that quickly. Leagues typically like sales to happen in the off season. It just makes things a bit easier, but very often, and I was down at NWSL draft earlier this week, and Jessica Berman, the commissioner of the NWSL, was talking about a number of teams that are for sale in her league. I think they wanted to get those a lot of those sales done before the season starts in, in a month or two, and I don't think it's going to happen. So leagues like to have a, a very tidy process in that regard, but it, oftentimes it takes it takes a lot longer, and... We're going to see. I mean, the the Nationals, for example, been on the market for a lot longer than the Commanders have formally. And then the opposite of that, the Suns process yeah. took four months, less maybe even. So uh, the, the Chelsea sale was five weeks uh, last year. So, so there are there are exceptions. Sometimes these do happen very quickly. But I would be very surprised if, if it was not Jeff Bezos, if there was a, a firm set new owner of the Commanders by, by the end of March. 